Okay, thank you very much for being here and uh, thank you very much to the Confidential Computing Consortium for sponsoring this um, as the university did not have funds for uh, me visiting here. So thank you very much. Uh, this is joint work with um, experts and the way I will define experts is that they have very profoundly scientific answers about the questions that I have and the questions I have are not trivial so uh, people who know me will actually know that. So Thomas Fossati, one of the uh, leaders for this who has worked a lot on this um, from ARM perspective and now he's at Linaro, Simon Frost and recently we have Shail Ziong who has worked from the formal perspective of ARM CC uh, artifacts. Yeah, so um, the talk I have organized it in the following way, that is um, I will describe some motivation of why we, did we start going about the problem of formal verification and why is it required, the, the motivation behind this of analyzing it scientifically. Then our own approach that we have taken for this, that is the specific tooling that we are using, that is the specific uh, kind of verification that is called symbolic that we are using and why we are using that. And some results that I will highlight from our work of uh, last four years roughly. And it's um, mainly being done at the, uh, as Mike mentioned, um, in the CCC attestation SIG, the special interest group with people from Intel, Microsoft, um, Google, and all that um, part of it. And the verification challenges, then I will describe what were the verification challenges that we faced from Intel and ARM specifically technologies. And finally, I will summarize the talk by saying a few words about what direction needs to be pursued specifically for uh, this kind of research. Right, so the motivation, first of all, um, is that we have ad hoc designs, let's face it. So, so we, we, the designs that are made without verification and a systematic way are not sustainable. They are going to fail at some point of time. And that's why we need actually to have some formal guarantees and some scientific way of analyzing these designs, which are very complicated, that the designer might not be aware of the corner cases. So that's why we need to have some scientific reasoning behind that. And that's what one of the news, so Intel let Google uh, hack its uh, trusted execution environment, that is the Intel TDX, one of the upcoming solutions from, TDX, uh, from, from Intel. And they found 10 bugs, which were um, uh, ranked uh, among the highest ones, highly vulnerable. Um, and I want to specifically focus as the title like on one of the critical mechanisms which is the attestation mechanism, which is the, I would argue the most important guarantees that is bringing to the user back. And without attestation one, couldn't, one cannot really imagine confidential computing. It's one of the most important building blocks of confidential computing. So what we call as the architecturally defined attestation is one of the terminologies that we specifically use here, meaning that um, the defined by the specific technology, whether it's Intel, uh, SEX, TDX, ARM, CCA, AMD, SCV, SNP, I will have some solutions. It's one that is provided by that specific vendor. So other than the solution that a software designer will build on top of that, so everything provided by that technology is basically the, attest the architecturally defined attestation. This is how we uh, terminology-wise define it. And so a very simplified high level overview of the thing is that we have an attester and we have a verifier. So we, we uh, let's say remove the comp complexity of the relying party, we, we have only two parties. And now it's the attester is running on the cloud and the verifier wants to verify whether it, the code and the data is correct one. So that's the basic simple problem and without going into the TLS or the protocols that are used, the architecturally defined attestation and then we can replicate it. The idea is that if we have the core thing formalized, which is missing at the moment, <coughs> one can then reuse that for um, using the solution for the relying party. So it, that's the way to go. So, so that's why we are focusing on the core problem, which is actually this attester and the verifier. How, do we, how does a verifier get to know that the attester is running the code and data that I wanted to have? So very simplified uh, view that a verifier will send an attestation challenge. The attester will include this challenge, sign it, and generate an evidence of all of the software stack that is um, here. And then that evidence or the attestation evidence, it will send back to the verifier. And then 
uh, the verifier will conduct some appraisal of that based on a specific policy. So policy can be dependent on the use, use case. And then optionally, that's why I have it in gray, some different, that is the optional step that at, after doing this appraisal, making a trustworthy decision, whether the tester is uh, genuine or not, it can send some secrets or sensitive data that it might not send if that is not trustworthy. So it's essentially developing the trustworthiness of the attester and the platform underneath. So that's the core idea of architecturally defined attestation. And that, I, 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 I would argue, is the basic building block that has been missing since now, uh, since, since years. The TLS block, the SPDM, and other protocols, they have been formalized. But this part really has been missing. And this is really what we want to focus on. So having understood this core idea at a high level, I want to go into a little bit of more details. The attester, as you saw in the last slide, is, as I said, generating the evidence. That's this part. And the verifier is doing simply the appraisal of that evidence. So for the generation of evidence, it needs to have some identity. That can be anonymous identity, and that's supplied by the identity supplier, one of the roles. And then we have the verifier, which needs us access to certain things that includes the endorsements provided by the endorser, some certificate chains, the PCK certs in case of Intel, for instance, some reference values against which it can compare the data coming from the evidence. That does this evidence correspond to the reference values that I expected? And finally, policy dependent on the use case. So what we want to do here was that the holistic coverage of all the phases that are included in attestation, starting from the phase which is the provisioning, where uh, and that itself is of two types. Number one, attester provisioning, meaning that when an attester is provisioned with its identity, that can be anonymous or non-anonymous, and then the verifier provisioned with these endorsements and reference values and the policy, and then the initialization steps, some of the setup steps that are required in, for one time or not required every time are part of this initialization step. For instance, getting an AK cert, so would be one of the examples in case of Intel. And then finally, the attestation protocol. Now this is the thing which will be running every time we do attestation, that an, a challenge is sent and evidence is formed and so on. So these will be the actual attestation protocol. So what we did in our previous work, or what previous works have focused on, was this specific attestation protocol phase. And we found that it's required to have a holistic coverage of the phases that is including the initialization phase as well as the provisioning phase so that one can see the overall picture of the whole thing. Right. Um, so this is not that easy. So the problem with this is that, that we have here a wide variety of the trusted execution environments. We have Intel SGX, TDX, AMD, SEV, SNP, ARM, CCA, RISC V, and then IBM PEF, and other solutions which might emerge in the future. So how do we deal with the diversity of all these solutions, given that we want to have an interoperable solution for the verifier to interact with different kinds of TEEs? And with each solution comes with its own terminology. Each solution comes with its own uh, hardware-specific requirements, which are not always public. So we have here a criteria of uh, uh, understanding different kind of uh, solutions into some groups. And I will describe three different uh, granularities uh, or criteria for understanding that. The first one is isolation granularity, as was in the last talk. So at what point of time, uh, at what level of granularity do we dis do we do that protection so it can be at process based intel sgx for instance or it can be at the vm based um, intel sgx being the only candidate here for process based and all others are vm based then what we have is that whether it's a complete product or whether it's an architectural specification Architectural specification meaning that one can build various implementations based on these specifications, and these implementations always meet these specifications. So ARM and RISC-V are basically in the category of architectural specifications, and others are uh, final products. And the third criteria I have here is the attester composition. What does it compose of? Whether it's layered as defined in the RFC 9334 RATS architecture, 
whether it's layered one building on top of the other, or whether it's composite, meaning that two or more attesters having sending uh, uh, one or more attesters, sorry, sending a sending an evidence to a lead attester, which will then finally send out the evidence to the verifier. And ARM in this category has basically a composite attester. And um, to, to show you a picture of what we already had uh, before was this, we, we worked with this Intel SGX category. So we had uh, both APID and DCAP, the two mechanisms of attestation for SGX already verified. And the scope of this specific uh, project, which is uh, at the CCC SIG, was the TDX, CCA, and AMD SEV SNP. For now, we have for TDX and CCA, and that's what I will describe. As you will see, it's already covering a lot of the different varieties of the flavors of different TEs that we have. For instance, it's covering the VM-based here. It's covering product versus architectural specifications. And from here, it's already covering the layered and the composite. So we have basic primitives for verification on the basis of which one can build a formally verified solution. So that's what we, we were aiming at. And uh, for instance, in the, uh, as I said, so, so this part, which is missing the process based we already have in our previous work. So kind of roughly at a very high level, not precisely, we are covering the spectrum of the things that I have described here, and I will be happy to discuss if you have other things in mind, uh, because I'm not an expert in this, so we have uh, not yet explored these scientifically. So uh, I would be um, uh, seeing what are the kind of differences there so that we can have a wi even wider coverage. Maybe something other than that I have described here is different in these technologies. Right, another challenge different from this of the wide variety is that we have these complicated designs, right? So, so these attestation mechanisms, they are very complicated. And the specifications which are, which are problematic are not only vague, but also outdated. And there is very little support for that. That, uh, For instance, in one of the flows, it says that, um, this is specifically for Intel TDX, uh, which says that SVNs, the security version numbers, as um, we understand, is that, OK, so I have a security update. I increment that number, and then what I would like is that the one coming from the evidence is greater than or equal to what I would have as a reference value. So this is the kind of general comparison that we have typically. But here in the, in the specification, it says that it should be exactly matching the values that are coming from the evidence, and that is a reference value, which is itself like uh, uh, unusual to have this kind of uh, thing and um, so so what we what we uh, we posted it in Intel forum and then what the response that we got was okay so this is outdated this needs to be updated and this is another kind of challenge that we need to face okay so coming to the contributions having uh, described a bit about the challenges um, I would like to claim like three main contributions for this work um, the first one that we have the reusable verification primitives covering all phases of attestation, and I defined the phases, that is the provisioning phase, the initialization phase, and then uh, the attestation protocol phase. The two artifacts that we have publicly available now are CCA, and for CCA specifically, the contribution is that it's the first formal specification and analysis of attestation in the architectural specifications group and the composite attester, as it's the only one which has composite uh, attester. Secondly, compared to TDX, which is uh, building upon one of our previous works with completely different set of authors, uh, Said uh, and Christoph Fetzer. So there we were looking at the attestation protocol phase only. So what we have here is now the initialization phase in addition to the provisioning phase, a complete holistic picture of the thing. And it's much more detailed as compared to that initial model which we had two years ago um, when there were not much details available. Now we have included the certificate chain and all the verifier steps that are required in order to appraise that evidence uh, as far as are available in the public uh, documentation of Intel TDX. So what we have uh, in addition is that, uh, as I said, the initialization phase and the variable measurements. The second contribution in this work is the formal proof of insecurity for the Intel's claim TCB, which they had in one of the white papers. 
And what we did here um, is that we uh, had substantial improvement to the specifications which Intel had. And thirdly, as we are in the open source summit here, so we have open source artifacts available. And I invite all of you to bring your expertise and contribute to that. I will, uh, I will show the link in one of my slides. And not a contribution for now, but one of the use cases that we are using it currently, which is a work in progress. Another project, uh, which is uh, also harbored at uh, CCC attestation SIG, is the attested TLS project. And there we are using the artifacts that we have developed from CCA in order to go to the next layer, which is the transport layer. And there we are using that CCA as the attester to do the fine-grained reasoning on the combination of the two things. So as I said, the DLS artifacts are formally verified. What was missing was this attestation protocols. Now we have both parts. And as you all also know that the security is not composable, you might have two different isolatedly verifiable, uh, provable security things, but the composition may not always be secure. So that's what we need to prove separately. And that's, that's what uh, we are heading to. And another use case is that we are now working with Intel. Intel asked us after the uh, around of March that can we verify the VTPM solution, the virtual TPM solution for their trans, uh, uh, trust domain um, extensions, Intel TDX. And that's what we are also working with Intel in order to now verify the VTPM solution, how it can execute and doing the reasoning there. That's also kind of analogous. That is basically we have the SPDM solution and we use the TDX artifacts that we have developed here in, to be used in combination with the two protocols. Again, the same reasoning, the two things might not be secure in isolation, but not necessarily in combination. Okay, so I would now describe a little bit about the approach that we have um, taken for um, uh, the, um, this problem that is dealing with the uh, formal verification. Um, and I would like to go by three steps, namely the model, threat model, and properties. I will describe why is it so. Firstly, I will give some introduction of what uh, formal methods are. I think we all know, understand that the importance of doing the scientific reasoning for that. And what formal methods actually do is that we have mathematical techniques, and they are going to guarantee that the model satisfies some specific set of requirements. That's the whole high level bit of formal methods. And typically, of, is it, it's of this form that we have a system which we want to analyze. In this case, we have a protocol. And we want to ensure that whether it satisfies a specific property or not. The system in this case is a protocol, attestation protocol, in the presence of an adversary, a specifically formally defined adversary. And we want to ensure that a specific security property is satisfied or not. We want to uh, answer this research question. And the way to go about this is that at very high level, again, the system is for, uh, formalized as an abs we form a abstract model out of the system specifications. On the other hand, we have these requirements. And what we want to ensure is that the requirements can be formalized as a property in the formal language of the tool that we are using. And the question then of verification is that does this abstract model satisfy the properties in the formal language that we have written down in mathematics. So the answer would be, let's say either the model satisfies these properties or otherwise not. And then with a counter example of what happened basically, what was the trace that led to the violation of that property. And it's really important for understanding what went wrong and how we can fix this protocol to be safe, uh, secure actually. Okay. so. As you see here, basically we have three kind of things, and that's what I, I divided into three parts. The protocol, the adversary model, and a specific property or a set of properties. And that's what I will now describe, the model, threat model, and properties. As I said, we have two technologies that we have analyzed, and I will give some high level ideas of, of both of them. First one, the CCA composite attester. It consists of two attesters, as you see here, the platform attester and the REN attester. And each one of them has um, uh, the testing environment and target environment, HES here as the testing environment, and monitor security domain as the target environment. And a realm attester has the 
RMM, the Realm Management Monitor as the attesting environment and Realm Instance as the target environment. The keys uh, corresponding to each of these environments are also shown here. And the question is for the verifier to check whether the combination of these two attesters, the evidence coming here that, that is in the form of platform evidence in combination with the Realm evidence, is it secure or not? Can I trust the whole stack of, of this and as well as this? So in addition to ARM's public um, um, pu published uh, specifications, thanks to our uh, ARM co-authors and collaborators, what we have here is a specific instantiation of the CCC tester uh, in the TE agnostic architecture. And the second thing is, which is not in the ARM specs, is the challenge response interaction model, and we have instantiated it with that. So we have tried to, as I said, the architectural specifications, one can build various solutions, implementations out of all, based on these uh, uh, specifications. And uh, what we wanted here was a flexibility for various solution implementers to use these artifacts. And for that, what we did is, let's say, we have the HES uh, like this interaction between the HES and the RMM to be very flexible so that you can have different flavors of the solutions. One example is the delegated design in which, like in the confidential computing use case, if I have a verifier, I would like not to have a round trip between the RMM and the HES, going each time to HES to go to do the signatures. I can probably save this time for the round trip and rather sign here at the RMM to avoid this. But this also comes with a security uh, lapse, which is that the key assigned to the, this RMM, which I will describe in the next slide, just some intuition, is that the key is over this secure channel, and if this secure channel is leak it, uh, leak, uh, leaking the key, then we have the side channels possible. And uh, that's what this HES will protect in the, in the design that we have lesser performance that is going this, through this round trip, doing always the signatures via HES, would be that the a tester would have a round trip and then it will have lesser performance and might lead to um, uh, slower, uh, of course will lead to slower response as compared to the solution here. The second uh, flexibility is that the verifier could also have different designs possible. One could have a design which is called cooperative here, meaning that the two attesters here, so, so the thing is now we have two attesters, we could have either one verifier corresponding to each of these meaning the platform verifier verifying the platform attester and the realm, attest, the realm verifier attest, verifying the uh, realm attester evidence. And this is the split design, and one could have a co cooperative design in which the two attesters, in which one verifier basically verifies the whole uh, evidence which is here called as the remote evidence. So this is the flexibility for both of these designs which we have uh, considered and made it flexible to be reused in different implementations possible. I will give an example of the delegated design specifically, which is um, that the initialization phase, um, as I described now, the two, uh, two different platform, at, uh, two different attesters uh, on the last slide. Now I have the attesting environments of these, HES and RMM. In the delegated design, RMM will be the one doing the signatures, and I don't need to contact HES every time for doing this kind of signatures, saving the round trip. But as I said, this channel is secure, assumed to be secure. This is one of the advantages of verification that we know exactly which channels are assumed to be secure. So the process is like this, uh, very high level, like it requests a key pair. This, this is RAK is the key pair for this RMM to do these signatures. And HES has pre-provisioned with, uh, with the key which is CPEC. And HES will de derive a key pair for, um, for um, RMM. It will sign and include the hash of the public key corresponding to this using its uh, signing key, CPEC. And then it will send over the pair of this, uh, the key pair that it generated along with the platform evidence that it formed at this stage for the RMM to cache and to be reused in the attestation protocol. So this is one of the delegated designs. Now RMM is provisioned with the key. The attest in the attestation protocol phase, RMM can now use this key Again, the secure and insecure channels are clearly labeled for verification, which are, which, which, what are the clear assumptions for the whole thing. 
and the verifier is assumed to be pre-provisioned with the public key which is required for the verification of the CPEC. And it sends a challenge, um, the REN forwards this challenge to the RMM. RMM includes this public part of this key pair that it has uh, obtained um, within that, uh, within that uh, attestation and that evidence will be signed using this key pair. It doesn't need to go to the HES, the delegated design. And then both evidences, the platform evidence that it obtained in the first phase, the initialization phase combined with the realm evidence, both bundled together will be sent over to the realm to be forwarded to the verifier and then the verifier will verify that. So this is the attestation protocol phase. And at a very high level, I, I will not go to the details, but uh, the whole verification, uh, as I said, is also flexible. Cooperative versus split verifier, this is showing the cooperative verifier, which is doing all the steps one together uh, and not uh, separately for both evidences. This is the cryptographically related steps, signature verification, and checking that the two, are, two attesters are cryptographically bound to each other via this hash. The public part of the rack is equal to the challenge which is sent uh, in the evidence. And this is guaranteeing the freshness. So we have uh, the signature uh, verification, the freshness, and then this uh, cooperation between the two, uh, or the linkage between the two uh, attesters. Then there is this life cycle state that whether it's secured or not, that has to be checked. And then some, complement, uh, some, some compulsory or mandatory checks, which are important for reference values and then some optional checks which are dependent on the use case. And then we finally have this event which will be checked by the verifier. Okay, switching to the TDX now, um, uh, how is that different from CCA? The layered attester in this case is that we, we, we see here the number of uh, entities and each one of them is layered above uh, the other which means that uh, the PCE, the provisioning certification enclave um, is certifying the TD coating enclave, the trust domain coating enclave in this case. And in the brackets we have here the important claims which are included in the evidence for TDQE, for instance, it's the QE SVN, the security version number, and the QE MR signer, for instance, for PC, it's also the PC SVN. For TDX module, it's SVN, as well as the measurements. And for TD, it's static and runtime measurements, which is in addition to the um, Static measurements, which are for um, SGX, for instance, it also has runtime measurements. And the process is uh, roughly at a high level like this. We have one and two steps showing the initialization phase in which the PCE is attesting the TD coating enclave, sending an evidence, and then getting a certificate for that. And then in the second uh, phase, that is the TD and the TDX sending its uh, evidence and getting a remote evidence, namely the TD code here. So this is uh, overall the flow of uh, TDX. Okay, and just to show you at a high level, again, that this is the initialization phase up to this point and then the attestation protocol afterwards, which includes the local attestation between PCE, uh, PCE and Q TDQE. And then the second phase between the TD and TDX module and the coating enclave. So again, the same layered structure shown in a different way in form of protocol. Let's now move to the threat model that we have for the verification of these protocols. And that's one of the strengths of this approach. We know exactly what we are saying to be secure against a specified threat model. Not saying that it's secure against, let's say, something vague, but very specified that that means what are the adversary capabilities, we need to define it precisely. Full control of the communication channel, variable measurements, meaning that uh, it's not fixed as compared to our previous work a couple of years ago that I described, uh, that we had uh, static measurements that one cannot, uh, adversary could not actually change the measurements. Uh, and now we, we can have we have the variable measurements where one can change these measurements. Entities are assumed to be honest as well as malicious, which means that realm in case of ARM and the TD in case of uh, TDX are basically can be can have uh, malicious uh, uh, um, activities inside. And uh, for both, basically, we take the measurements as input from the adversary. 
uh, that means basically that adversary can now generate any measurements that's relating to this point that is we have variable measurements and secure channels as I said uh, as I also showed on the diagrams that we are uh, clearly showing what channels are secure what needs to be uh, and once uh, so, so what we assume as secure once it is not secure so every guarantee is gone so so that's the that's the real crux of this thing quickly about the properties that are of interest for this kind of protocols are basically uh, going back to the formal methods slide that I showed we have a model which is constructed from a system and now everything is operated on that specific model nothing is related to um, that uh, original system so one should be very careful that that system that model that we have generated is very much reflecting what was the original system so that's why we have the sanity checks ensuring that everything is correct integrity of the data that is this evidence is not uh, modified by the adversary or at least we can detect that freshness of this evidence that it cannot be replayed confidentiality meaning that the attestation related keys which I showed in one of the slides uh, for ARM and TDX that they are protected uh, adversary cannot uh, see that or generate that and authentication which is very closely related to integrity but precisely about the data origin whether we are talking about verifier authentication or attested authentication so quickly about the results that we have based on this uh, verification effort that we have done for the CCA um, basically we had two attesters that's that's why that's because it, it is a composite attester and this table shows the results that the platform attester has integrity it has no freshness the same evidence is replayed every time because it obtained in the initialization phase and it's replayed each time so that's by design that's not a problem and authentication is not fulfilled by the architecturally defined attestation recall that we are not including the TLS protocol or the um, the, the transport protocols are not included we are really dealing with the whole crux of attestation and that's why we need to integrate them with the TLS to provide authentication for REM, um, all these three properties are satisfied here's a snapshot showing that within two minutes uh, the artifacts prove the properties and let's go to the, T, uh, the, the TDX part which I described briefly that Intel claimed that this is the TCB in one of its white papers back in 2021 mm -hmm and what we did we, we analyzed that the whole certificate chain is like this which was never clarified in the specifications of Intel TDX and which looks very similar to SGX with the uh, difference that here there is a TD instead of this uh, enclave and correspondingly this uh, is showing the certificates corresponding to these entities meaning that the TD has TD code QQE has AK cert and so on uh, and this, uh, these are the certificate revocation lists corresponding to that and um, if you see here carefully that's one of the things that all other software other than mentioned here is to be not trusted by the trust domain and this was something which was really suspicious for us to see how does it how is it possible not to trust one entity within the search chain the adversary could generate another chain out of that if this is malicious so what we did is we analyzed um, it formally and that's why uh, where we have uh, based on Intel's TCB integrity freshness confidentiality none of these properties hold because PC is untrusted and an adversary can then um, do the replay attacks then integrity um, uh, is not satisfied and in our proposed we include PC as the trusted thing so we, we have both artifacts with a single line change you can uh, analyze both of them try to be as flexible as possible and authentication again we have uh, no guarantees because it's remote architecturally defined attestation and not uh, the TLS protocols or any other transport protocols so we updated it uh, oh sorry we reported it to Intel and Intel updated these um, as uh, replacing this TD coating enclave with the TD attestation software which is that all the layers are to be seen but what is problematic is that it was updated on the same link replacing the old white one we have the evidence here that six times within the last six months it was changed on the same links and we reported this to Intel as well to be updated so that we have a transparency which is we are uh, lacking in these kind of uh, uh, trusted execution environments so quickly about the verification challenges uh, I already gave you some insights so I will quickly just describe that the 
CC artifacts were 400 pages. Um, uh, we fortunately didn't need to read all because we had um, uh, guys with us. Um, specification were in natural language, a big hurdle for the verification to precisely describe it and various implementations are possible because it's architectural specification. For TDX, we had a separate set of challenges. It's a whole uh, product, right? So, so there were 1,500 pages of uh, specs, and then it inherits what is in the SEX alone, uh, SEX mm -hmm. itself. Uh, as in the design, you see this uh, TD coating enclave and PC, which is like 5,000 pages of the software development manual alone. Specs are again in natural language, and uh, it's true for all of the vendors. We don't have any uh, one describing it uh, formally. And the specifications are ambiguous, incomplete, contradicting, and outdated as one of the examples. And specs are updated on the same link, which is one of the critical issues in our mind. OK, let's, let's kind of uh, see what we, ho what we take home from, from all of this effort. And um, here is what I have been uh, discussing about, that the transport layer is in on the top, SPDM or the TLS protocol. And here is the architecturally defined attestation, the DCAP, APID, DCAP, or the platform attester, realm attester for CCA. And this is the kind of thing that we have added to the picture. Now this is verified. This is formally verified. We can now integrate the two things which leads us to this attested TLS project, or again, harbored at uh, the CCC um, uh, attestation SIG. And one can have different now compositions of that attestation evidence. Is it generated before doing that TLS handshake? or in between that handshake or after that handshake. The RATLS mentioned in the last talk was in this category, pre-handshake attestation, which has a possibility of collusion attacks and replay attacks. And that's why intra is the uh, way to go forward. And that's what we are using in this solution. We really need to have more discussions between the three communities, systems engineering, security community, and form method communities. And I really love this kind of events where we get to talk to each other to solve these problems, to move the things forward. And complete specifications are required to be made open source. Even if the code basis is, the complete specification is something that is verifiable. We can analyze that. We can see whether the implementation is matching with these uh, specifications or not. With open source code, OK, we can, we, can, we can analyze that as well. But what against? If the specs are not and implementation is there, we cannot really do that kind of verification which we want. And there is a need for systematic design of attestation protocols that is uh, to be done. The earlier, the better. Uh, we really have to do it. There, 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 there is no way around. We, we cannot really say, OK, this is the design, and then we, we, it's broken, and then we patch, and then go again about this circle. This will never end. And when the things are trusted until they are formally verified. So that's maybe uh, the, the key point of all of this effort. And here are some of the key references that I have used in my presentation. And I would like to invite all of you to bring your expertise to this project, which is um, available at this link. There are some uh, specifications available, um, technically, uh, a research paper here. And we are in the process of updating that a second draft will be updated, uh, available soon. Um, I really want to thank you all for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions, comments, criticism, or critique, uh, anything that you might have. We, ha we have a minute or so for, uh, for questions, so uh, who's, who's got a question? Uh, I'm just going to say how important I think this is. Um, and the, the points on your previous slide uh, about everything being designed in the open, uh, and specifications are so important for all of the sort of work we're trying to do. We're trying to build, uh, we're trying to create roots of trust, and without, without that happening in the open, it's, it's basically impossible. So I really appreciate all the work that the folks at Dresden and ARM and Intel have put in, and it's great to see academia interacting with industry in, this, in these sorts of ways and open source. So thank you so much for all, all the work. Any specific questions? Um, if not, I'm going to take you aside and maybe have a question later on. That's fine. Oh, um, sure, sure. We've got uh, we've 15 minutes now uh, for a break, so please, if you can find somewhere to get some water or anything, please do so. Um, it's a bit of a labyrinth around here. We'll be back at, uh, at quarter past. Thank you very much indeed to everyone already. Thank you.